Welcome to the second installment of the Summer Sermon Series. Say that with me. I didn't say it yet. I said, say it with me. No, that's okay. Just see how many times you can say that. We are talking about animated faith, and today we looked at the story of Bob and Helen Parr and their three children, Violet, Dash, and Jack-Jack, a.k.a. The Incredibles. They are a family of superheroes that use their powers to do good and protect the world from evil. <clears throat> Bob, Mr. Incredible, is super strong and able to bench press a locomotive. Helen, Elastigirl, she is incredibly stretchy and strong. Violet can create a force field and turn invisible. How many of you would like to be invisible at times? Wouldn't that be cool? And Dash is simply super fast so much that he can run on the surface of the water. But the real dangerous one is Jack-Jack. He can turn into flames, go full metal, has laser eyes, and can float, teleport, and walk through matter, as well as having self-cloning abilities. I think I want to be Jack-Jack, don't you? He sounds like the tough one. With a combination of their individual talents, they make an unstoppable team. They're not perfect, but they manage to keep evil at bay, sparing the world its trauma. They take on such villains as Syndrome, who was once a big fan of the Incredibles, but is now bitterly disenchanted. Bon voyage. He's out to steal all he can get. And the underminer, a villain who works from beneath the surface to advance himself at the expense of others. And then there is the ever-popular screen slaver who uses her hypno-goggles and the power of screens and televisions and media to bend people to her will. Now, because the Incredibles have a focus on rescuing the people before capturing the villain, lots of times in the success of their mission, there is a mess that is left behind by the activity of the villain. And because people only see the negative, they start blaming all of the problems on the ones who are trying to solve them the superheroes become villains. And they are, by the political powers that be, they are regulated to not be who they are any longer, but they need to conform to the rest of the world, get a house in the suburbs, and live like everybody else. The only problem is, as they are giving up their role as superheroes, evil advances in the world. This is an animated fulfillment of the words of the Irish political philosopher Edmund Burke that said the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Today, in our society, there is a real need for some real superheroes. People who can and will make the difference in the world. So the question presents itself to us today, who will rise up and answer the call? Who will say, yes, I will work to make a difference? Who will champion the fight against evil in our world with a priority of rescuing people? Who are the real Incredibles? I'll suggest to answer these questions, I don't think we have to look any further than the people in the room with us right now. We don't have to look any further than to those who are watching via internet today. We don't need to sit around and wait for someone to step up and make a difference. Jesus has already designated that role to the church. You missed the best place all day. You're going to have to say amen. That was your one shot. He has designated the role of difference making to the body of Christ, to all who follow Jesus. First, we must realize that we are appointed. Jesus gathered his first disciples together and he took them to the coast of Caesarea Philippi. This was a place that was filled with ungodliness, pagan worship, idols, anything you could think of that was anti-God was going on in this city. 
And it's there that he asked the question, do you really know who I am? I know the world has one opinion, but you have walked with me. You have slept where I've slept. You have gone where I've gone. You've eaten what I've eaten. What do you think? Who do you say I am? It was there that Peter had probably his brightest shining moment with Jesus. As he said, I know you are the Christ, the Messiah, the one the world has been waiting on. Jesus begins to pronounce blessing over this revelation, and then he says this, Upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Let me give you the context of the word church. First of all, the word church in its original means community, particularly the community that belongs to Jesus. So we see that God has called the church to be a community, a family, if you will. But it doesn't stop with community. It implies commission because it means a community of the called. I could use some prayers today. I really could. It means we are called out as a community of faith for a purpose in the earth. The government cannot make the difference in our culture that needs to be made. Politicians and civic groups cannot make the difference. These people, if they would do their job properly, can make a difference. But the only people that can make the difference in the world are the people who know, love, and follow Jesus Christ. <laughs> Only when we quit focusing on having church and start focusing on being the church will the world change. Understand, we come in and we gather and, and, and we, we hear the word we need to hear, and that's wonderful. And we come and we give our praise, and that's wonderful too. And sometimes we come and we're so blessed because we've been so burdened, and that's wonderful too. But when did our relationship with God become all about us? Oh, there's a few that's right and a lot of quiet going on today. When did church become about us getting ours? Was that the way the first 12 disciples approached it? Were they concerned with getting together and getting theirs? Or were they concerned with the commission that had been placed in their hands? I believe God's going to speak a word to this church today. Only when we start focusing on being the church, we don't need to wait on someone else to step up and make the difference in the world. God has already left a group of people with a commission to make the only difference that matters. And that group of people, my friend, is his church that he died to purchase and he empowered with his presence. You need to understand that we are the appointed ones to make the difference in the world. But not only are we appointed, we have authority. According to Matthew 28, 18, Jesus is the one who's been given authority in heaven over earthly things. And it is told us that, that he gave that, made a conscious decision to give that authority to his followers. In Matthew 10 and 1, the Bible says he gave his disciples authority to cast out evil spirits and heal all manner of disease. Then in verse 19, he says, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Now listen, while I respect civil authority and while I'm grateful for those who truly serve for the good of all people, civil authority can only manage the chaos. That's all it can do. They can only step up when it goes wrong and try to take some corrective measure to keep the chaos to a minimum. The root of society's ills is spiritual. It is not cultural, it is not financial, it is spiritual. And to address a spiritual need, it takes real spiritual authority. And that authority has been given to those who follow Jesus Christ. I could use an amen. We have the authority to walk in victory 
over the one who presents the problem for all of humanity. His name is Satan. And we need to remember we are appointed to this. We've been given authority for this, and we are anointed for this. Oh, it's going to get tight before it gets right, I can tell you that. When Jesus ascended to the Father, he told his disciples, go stay in Jerusalem and don't leave there until you receive the promise of the Father. And then he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. We don't have superpowers. We have supernatural power. You need to understand something. Jesus did not raise up and leave in the earth a pitiful church. He raised up a powerful church. <laughs> Jesus did not establish a church full of victims. He established a church full of victors. I thought the guy named Victor in here would probably appreciate that one. He did not leave us here to wallow in our own inadequacies. He gave us power and anointing to overcome. He didn't leave a community here that only focuses on itself and barely survives. He left a community of the call. That's why it's time that we realize something. We may be in this world, but we are no longer of this world. There is a greater power at work within us. Yes, we are human, but we are not only human. There is a supernatural force that lives inside of us, and it is that supernatural force that the world needs so desperately to make the difference in today's culture. As I was writing my notes, I did what my father has often done when I read behind his notes. And he'd make a note to himself. And my note says, Lord, help me as I make this statement. But I'm just going to lay it out for you and we'll see where it goes. The church has allowed the enemy to deceive us. Somehow our faith has become all about us. We're so caught up dealing with our own junk and improving our own situations that we've completely forgotten about the mission to go into all the world and preach the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. We have made the gospel a commodity for consumers. Just come to church, you're going to get blessed. Just come to church, preacher's going to preach something that's going to just pick you up. It's going to encourage you. Come on to church, you're going to feel so good when you leave. Listen, it's okay to come to church. Everybody should come to church, but when we walk out those doors, we got to learn to be the church. We need to remember we don't gather just to get ours, but we gather together and we are called together in a setting such as this to be equipped to do the work of the ministry in the earth. We are not a community of consumers. We are a community of the call, and it's time that we realize God did not just save us to sit us down. God did not just save us to satisfy our own personal needs. God saved us and redeemed us so that the chain of grace may be extended in the earth and the people that you are around may be influenced by the power and presence of God that lives in you. <clears throat> the world needs the Incredibles. That's right. I'm talking about the hope of the world today and the hope of the world is sitting in this room. Oh, Lord. When are we going to learn that it's not what's going on in Washington that will change the world? but it's what's going on in every home of every believer of Jesus Christ in every church house. We are completely content together and keep our superpower to ourselves. We're complete, but you know what? This led to frustration for the Incredibles, and it's led to a frustration within the church because when the church is regulated to no longer be who we are, but we need to blend in with everybody else, it frustrates, it, it, it offends the Holy Spirit within us. It exasperates us as a people. And I believe there are a lot of frustrated churches today that have simply blended into the culture and followed the political pressure, and that has caused a grief 
receiving of the Holy Spirit's presence, but it's time we realize we are called to be the Incredibles in the earth because there is an incredible power and an incredible presence that lives inside of all of us that is desperately needed in today's culture. As a believer in Jesus, you are not what's wrong in the world. You are what is right in the world. Mm. But what about the anti-Christian sentiment of today, Pastor? Well, listen, there are powers that work against us. And it ain't something new. We're walking around squealing like the little piglet that's hungry and oh what are we going to do all this stuff against us listen in the early days of the church the bible says we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world against evil spirits in the heavenly places did you notice that when jesus gave the church authority he most often did it in relation to the enemy that we were facing It should not be a shock to us that there are powers that work against us. And the culture of today is, if it's difficult, let's leave it alone. If it causes too many waves, if it brings too much criticism, if it causes too much discomfort, let's just shy away from it and play in our safe zone. Listen, the person that is out there that is strung out of their mind on drugs doesn't need the church to play it safe. The prostitute that is laying in a ditch barely breathing somewhere today doesn't need the church to play it safe. People that are steeped in the darkness of the demonic forces of this earth don't need the church to play it safe. The world needs the church to be bold. The world needs the church to be incredible. The church, the world needs the church to be authentic and stand up and say, hey, we are not like the rest of the world. We are the counterculture to today's culture, and we are here to make a difference in the lives that are broken and bruised. The underminer Satan works beneath the surface to bring disruption and disturbance to the surface. The Bible says he seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Syndrome, who was once enchanted with the church, now feels dejected by the church and now works politically against the body of Christ, saying that we must make certain that we have the separation of church from state. We must make certain that we follow this and we follow that because everyone should be free to choose. Listen, everyone is free to choose, but that doesn't mean the church is to be silent. Everyone's free to choose, but that doesn't mean that the church should go away and drift into some server up somewhere and gather together and not make any kind of difference. You have a voice like everybody else's voice, but your voice is different in this. You are not to be speaking your words. You are to be speaking his words and his truth, and it is his truth that will set people free according to the book of John chapter 8. Bomboyage is out to get all they can get and fights against the people and the message of Jesus so they can simply fulfill their own fleshly desires. And then there is screen slaver. (laughs) We do not realize it, but screen slaver is at work through these things right here and through those smaller things we call smartphones. And do you know that there's an intentional move with all of these screens to preach a certain message, to bend minds to a certain will. It's thrown across there all the time. Screen slaver is at work against the body of Christ, filling our minds and our hearts with things that are unlike God. Yes, there are powers that are against us, both spiritual and cultural. But there may be powers that are against us, but there are people who need us. The Incredibles were faced with a decision. Do we bend to the powers against us, or do we help the people that need us? I believe the church is facing that dilemma and that question right now. Do we bend to the political pressure against us, Do we bend to the cultural pressure against us? 
or do we stand up and say, villain, do what you want to do. We are here for the people that need us. Mm. The only reason the Incredibles fought the villains was to save the people. And I'm not after picking a fight with the devil. I don't think that's productive if all you ever do is fight the devil. We're not here to fight the devil. Jesus defeated the devil. We're here to help the people. We're here to break chains in the lives of the people that are held in bondage by him. But we need not think we will do it without resistance. We need not think that we can destroy the works of the enemy without the enemy rising up against us. But in the course of rescuing the people, we may face the powers that are against us. But I thank God that Jesus has already defeated the enemy. And if we will stand in faith and not run in fear, we can rescue the people and watch the devil lose at the same time. Mm. when we win people to Jesus the devil loses again I know a lot of people get caught up in what we call spiritual warfare and, and they focus on just that I don't make war in the heavenlies pastor well why you do hopefully you're rescuing some people in the earthly just get focused on being the church and on the mission of the church. You'll have all the spiritual warfare you want to handle. <laughs> you don't have to focus on it. It'll find you. Every devil from hell will come after you when you start going after the people that are under the dominion of Satan's power. But guess what? We have the promise that Jesus has overcome every bit of trouble we will have in the world and he has overcome the enemy of us all so we can stand and do what God's called us to do. And when the enemy raises his head, just go ahead and claim victory in Jesus' name and keep doing what we're called to do. We are here to rescue the people. You need to slap somebody a high five and say, now we're getting and then we are here to rescue people from the darkness of the world. So what if we encounter powers that come against us? That's not the focus. We keep doing what we're here to do and let the devil try to stop it. Well, I got news for you. He's worked hard, but in the past 2,000 years, he hasn't stopped it. Somebody says, oh, but the culture's changing, Pastor. It's getting worse out there. People are not believing this Jesus message anymore. Listen, the message was brand new 2,000 years ago to the world. Nobody believed it then except the people that had encountered Jesus, but they believed it so much. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? They believed it so much that they turned the world upside down with that message. I believe no matter what happens in the culture, Jesus is still the answer. The church is still the hope of the world, and we can carry his message, and it doesn't matter what powers of hell influence the culture. The power that influences the church is greater than the power that influences the culture. Culture. the world needs the incredibles because the world faces the impossible the world in which we live is in turmoil and while I am grateful for a strong economy temporary material success will not solve our problems Economic prosperity will not solve our problems. The problems are greater. The people of the world are lost in darkness, and Jesus said, we are the light. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Our lives are to be beacons of hope for those who have lost their way. They must know just because they've lost their way doesn't mean they have to lose their soul. And only a light can dispel that kind of darkness. People are hurting and they live with the pain of broken relationships and rejections and shattered dreams. They self-medicate only to make their condition worse. But we as the body of Christ, we know the healer. We know that Jesus can heal broken hearts and lives because he healed ours. Can I get an amen from somebody? Listen, 
The crisis we face of addiction and suicide and self-harm, it shows the hurt that is within the heart of the world. We can't heal ourselves, but the church walks in the authority of the healer. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I said we walk in the authority of the healer, and the Jesus in us can address the brokenness in them. The Jesus in us can address the hurt within them. The Jesus within us can address the sickness within them them how many of you would say that somebody laying hands on a sick person and that sick person gets well is incredible when's the last time you heard a sermon about it when's the last time you've seen it do you realize that only when the power of the Holy Spirit operates in the church in that way will people truly believe that Jesus is Lord? Do you realize that? Do you realize as long as we talk about things we can't see and can't do, it doesn't bring any credit to our message? Do you realize as long as we're preaching a God that's so big and we live so little, it's never going to make a difference? See, I believe it's incredible. When God heals a body from sickness and disease, I've seen him do it. I've been healed myself. You can ask both of my parents. I've been there when the doctors couldn't heal me, but God could. I was in an office at 19 years old having preached 15 weeks straight. I was told back then, and that is about 33 years ago, that if I didn't quit preaching, I'd never sing again, and I may damage my ability to talk. But here I am, 33 years later, singing and preaching. Why? Because there's a power in me that is greater than a power that is against me. But I'm just going to tell you, you know the reason Jesus healed sickness? I do believe he had compassion on the person that was sick. I believe his heart was moved for their condition. But more than that, he wanted the world to know that he has the authority to deal with the real sickness of man, and that real sickness is sin. And if we want to see people delivered from sin, the power of the Holy Spirit is going to have to start operating in the church again. I don't want to get ahead of myself. The world is broken in the bondage and the yoke of sin and unable to free themselves from repetitive, destructive behavior that leads to further bondage in their life. But we have the chain breaker. In Isaiah 10 and 27, it tells us that the yoke of bondage is destroyed because of the anointing. I got any friendlies out there? I might start looking at my mama here in a second if y'all don't, don't straighten up now. Please don't be offended by this. But it's not great ability that breaks the bondage in people's lives. It's not the best program that breaks the bondage in people's lives. That's why a Holy Spirit anointing is more important than a polished gift. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit, but because he doesn't operate in our lives on a daily basis, we come up with gimmicks. Ooh, it is so quiet in here. I'm never going to get to the other campus if y'all don't start saying amen. <laughs> we work hard to make it right. We want to get it just right. We want to give our best, and there is nothing wrong with wanting to give your best to God. We should always give our best to God. But I want you to understand something. It's not your polished gift that will break the yoke of sin in somebody's life. It's not your abilities and your, your way with your words and your personality that will change somebody's life. The only thing that will break the bondage in our world is when the church gets anointed by the Holy Spirit again. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It's when the preachers in the pulpit get anointed by the Holy Spirit again. It's when the prayers get anointed by the Holy Spirit again. It's when the greeters get anointed. Come on, somebody. It's when the greeters get anointed with the Holy Spirit again. It's when the media team gets anointed with the Holy Spirit again. If we want to see things run smoothly, that's wonderful. But if nobody's getting saved, if nobody's getting delivered, if people are coming to church for 20 years with the same bondage, something's wrong. It's time to turn it around and say we have a power. That power is the Holy Spirit of the Almighty God and he can break chains in people's lives if the church is willing to let the Spirit it work.
I'm going to tell you something. The churches that are trying to find the middle of the ground are dying. Did you hear what I said? The churches that are looking for middle ground with this thing are dying. The church doesn't need more, the world doesn't need more middle ground. They find that among themselves. They need some people who have become extreme. They need people who have become extreme in their love for Jesus Christ. They need people who become extreme in the way they walk in the holiness of God in their lifestyle. They need people who have become extreme with a passion for the people who are lost. We will not get there. See, the world is lost, but we know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And there are even gospel preachers that are backing up on that. And you know what? When you back up on Jesus, you walk away from the only access we have to get to the Father. When you start compromising the Scripture and quenching the Spirit, you've got nothing left but the power of personality, and that will only go so far. It's time that the church gets prayed up. It's time that the church gets filled up. It's time that the church gets worded up and gets ready to be incredible in the earth again. It's time to turn the world upside down and rescue the people who are lost and in darkness. Mm. People need to know if you're lost, he's the way. People need to know if you're confused, he's the truth. People know, need to know if they're desperate and depressed and discouraged, he is the life. The world needs the church to be incredible. We weren't given this supernatural power to blend in. We were given the supernatural power to stand out. We were not given the supernatural power to accommodate sin. But I'm just going to tell you, there's so much sin in the church, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the church and the world. We're trying to get out there and reach people who are in bondage. I want to see people set free. I believe the church needs to be set free. There are things going on in our homes and our lives that are so unlike the God who has called us to serve him and walk in the beauty of his holiness, and we wonder why we have no power to set people free. You know why? Because if the Holy Spirit's power doesn't work in you and produce the character of Jesus in you, it's certainly not going to produce spiritual gifts that will help liberate people from their bondage. If the power's going to work through us, the power's got to work in us. Are you hearing what I'm telling you today? I'm not trying to thin the herd or anything. I'm not trying to run anybody off. But I am telling you, we have a greater calling over us than just to gather and deal with our own stuff. We are here to change the world with the love and message of Jesus Christ. And the only way that's going to happen it's when the church gets full of the Holy Spirit again. You probably ought to pray before this next statement. Because <laughs> I know you pray for me on a regular basis. You can't be full of the Spirit when you're full of yourself. You can't walk in the Holy Spirit's power as long as you're depending on your own power. What we got ain't going to get it done. But what he gives, we'll get it done. I pray for our president. I pray for the leaders of this country. I pray for the civil authorities. But they're not going to do my job. And they're not going to do your job. It's good to pray for them. But they don't have the call of God on their life you've got on yours. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? We are called to live authentic Christian lives and to love with an authentic Christian love. And when the church starts living authentic Christian lives full of the power of the Holy Spirit with the fruit of the Spirit manifesting and the gift of the Spirit manifesting, and when we start loving like Jesus loves, guess what? That's when the change is going to happen in the world, when we become who we are supposed to be. How many of you would say, Pastor, I'm done with church as usual. I'm done with having church. I want to be the church in Jesus' name. I'm done 
done with the status quo. I'm done with just coming here and getting mine. I want to turn the world upside down. I want to walk through the gates of hell that will not prevail against us and rescue everybody held under the dominion of Satan's power. Come on, somebody. Are you ready to make the difference? Mm, Stand with me. Just tell them to keep singing over there. You were given a mask when you came in. And there's a reason. That mask is so that when you do step into your anointing and start making the difference, that people don't look at you. But they see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. Your identity is not important. His identity is. Don't you worry about it. He's got a book with your name in it. And if you don't get the recognition and the applause of man, don't worry. You have the approval of God. You just do what you do and don't care who gets the credit for it and let people glorify God. Hide your identity in the Holy Spirit. Get so lost so that you can be found in him. Don't worry about people giving you praise. Let God give you power to change lives. Father, I pray over this congregation in the mighty name of Jesus. This has been a strong word. This is an indicting word from the pulpit to the pew that we have allowed ourselves to become about ourselves to blend in with a culture that doesn't need a church that blends in, that needs a church that stands out. So today, I declare in Jesus, we are truly blessed, highly favored, deeply loved, and we are called to be incredible. So in the name of Jesus, break every yoke of bondage in the church. Free up the Holy Spirit in our lives. Free up the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit in the body so that they may be a witness to the unbeliever so that the world will know that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. You did not lead the church here to glorify itself or to be loved by the world. You left the church here so that you could love the world through the church and so that you could bring change to the world. So today, Father, we say yes, and we answer the call. Don't look for anybody else, Jesus. We are here. We're signing up. We're reporting for duty, and we declare we will turn this world upside down one more time with a power that is greater than any known to mankind, the power of your Holy Spirit. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone shouted. I said, everybody shouted. Everybody shouted. Hallelujah.